This is my new um, Singer Spartan sewing machine. And uh, today is September 10th, 2016. Um, the dog and I just got back from the vet. We had uh, quite an exciting time over there. We met a greyhound, um, a black cocker spaniel, an English spaniel, three different, um, what are they called, golden retrievers, uh, one pit bull mix, three cats, a blue and gold macaw, and some fish. And it was quite an exciting time. So now I'm back home again and I want to start using my new Spartan that I unpacked uh, yesterday afternoon. It only took about five minutes to change the solid hand wheel to a spoked hand wheel and attach the hand crank. And this is now a hand crank machine. And today, September 10th, is National Sewing Machine Day. So if you have a sewing machine, try to sew with it. Try to promote them. Um, the skill of sewing is a wonderful skill to have. But I want to um, show you something on this machine that I'm thinking of doing. Um, this is cotton, quilting cotton. This is flannel, and this is the same flannel um, I'm using in my hanky quilt. It's really a bed sheet cut up into squares, and then I have cotton on the back. And I'll, I'll just show you how the Spartan sews as a hand crank. It's very much like the 99. And that's just grabbing my thread from where I started. I actually have a chain stitch edge on that because I had started doing that with a Model 20. So as you can see, these are wonderful machines. Um, very simple to use. I think you can see in the view, it has several stitch length settings from 30 all the way down to 6. So that's quite a range. And then when you move the lever up and you get back tack, you get a set stitch length, but you get reverse. So that's a good feature. The fact that it has such a simple bobbin winder had a lot to do with how easy it was to convert it to a hand crank. So that's another good thing. It's a three-quarter size machine. It weighs uh, 20 pounds with the hand crank on it. It's cast iron, made by Singer. This one is made, um, the pillar is marked made in Great Britain. It was actually made in their Scotland plant. So let me show you the back tack. Now what I'm uh, thinking of doing with my hanky quilt is, um, and I had originally designed those to be portable so that a few, in the past few weeks, if you've missed my videos, um, we almost became homeless. And I needed to take a quilt with me to work on for quilts for veterans, and I designed the hanky quilt. And right now the quilt that's ready for me to start has flannel as a batting. And that's why I'm, I'm really just testing this out. Um, originally on the hanky quilt I was going to do quilting at the top half of the square and quilting at the bottom and the Pledge of Allegiance in the middle. I am now thinking that what I might do is quilt the entire square and then put either USA or Thank You in the center of each square with embroidery um, because it seems it might be a, a shorter but also more appropriate message. So what I would be doing with the hanky quilt squares is similar to what I'm doing here. I would just be going around the outer edges to make to have the square layers all together but then um, and I'll probably be working this out today, 
I'd probably, on the large squares, I'll either attach a quilting foot. I've snatched the attachment set from my grandmother's 99. And I can put a low shank quilting foot on here. And I'll either do um, a whole set of horizontal and vertical lines. Horizontal and vertical lines. Um, and have like a checked effect in quilting. And then I can just hand embroider whatever message I put on them. So I just, this is a very quick test on how how this machine does through two layers of quilting cotton and flannel. The hanky quilt itself is a little bit lighter weight because the top layer is a hanky. But you can see that goes through it without a problem. Now here's something else I want to try and I'm not sure if I'll end up doing this or not. Um, it's another way of m making a batting. Um, this is the pharmaceutical cotton that I've been spinning and I have a layer laid flat there. Let me show you how it comes in the box. It's kind of in a roll. It's the same cotton that comes in medicine jars or uh, plastic medicine containers. They stuff the cotton on top of the pills. But what this does is open up. Now this is 100% um, cotton that's been bleached. And I actually like to spin with it because it separates like this. But another use for it might be using it as batting. So you can see that I can pull this apart into they end up being strips of about a quarter inch wide and fairly thin. But what I've done is just open it up more or less in half and placed it on a square. And what I want to see is if the effect of quilting is any different with something like this as a batting. Now, because it's not needle punched and it's not coated or um, somehow electronically held together, it would be loose if the piece weren't um, heavily quilted. But at the same time, it would be a little bit more puffy than the flannel. So it would be closer to using um, like the polyester battings in thickness, but it's 100% cotton. So it would wash differently, and the only thing I know I would have to do is, like I said, heavily quilt the square I was working on. Now on the hanky quilts, with the top layer being a hanky, and that's very, um, it's a lightweight fabric, so this will show through, and I don't know if that might be an issue. But I found that it's a little bit difficult to find white or off-white flannel. Um, I did find some, but it was about $7 a yard. And this is um, about $15 for three pounds, not including the shipping. With the shipping altogether, it was about $20, $24 for three pounds. But that three pounds, when you open it up like this, will go an awful long way. So I'm, I'm looking for a batting alternative. Now I could just use regular cotton batting that is needle punched. I'm just going to randomly uh, do some quilting. But that also is about $24 plus shipping and you get one quilt out of it. I think with the three pounds of loose cotton I would get more than one quilt out of it. Now this machine is actually acting a little bit stiff but I just added oil to it. 
um, early this morning. And you can see that is a little bit puffy. Um, the brand name for the pharmaceutical cotton, if you look for Carolina Cotton or Carolina Cotton Coil, you'll find it. It's sold in either nail salon or hair salon stores. Um, sometimes you can actually find it just sold because it's 100% cotton in a coil, but it's usually sold in salons. So now, I know if I wash it at this point, this little piece, that the cotton batting would shift in washing. So it would really need to be heavily quilted. If I were going to use it on a hanky quilt, I would have to plan on one inch squares. Now the hanky quilt squares themselves are about 16 inches. So I would have to do one in, uh, lines one inch apart in both directions to feel that if this shifted, at least it would only be one inch that, that moved around and not, it wouldn't migrate anywhere. Now I also have a lot of scrap fabrics that I'll have to be using up. I have um, a few patchwork pieces already pieced together but without a backing, you know, half finished pieced items. If I can use this as a batting, I can get a lot more of those done as opposed to just buying, say, a twin size batting and hoping it, it does all of them. So there is um, one, two, three, four, is that four, one, two, three, four, but I still think that that might shift a little bit. But this is kind of a relaxing thing. If, if you cut out a bunch of squares like this and you put the batting in, you could just keep quilting. Or if you do free motion quilting, you could just keep free motion quilting. That's okay, I'll get the yarn in a minute. Now there's um, a section right here that is um, those two, see that's how puffy it would be. And that might be more of a, a, an effect that I would want um, on a quilt. I'll have to see what it looks like under a hanky though because um, it'll look more broken because I pulled it apart. I mean it's not completely flat and even. But it's something to think about, um, especially if you have cotton but you don't have batting. You could do the same thing with raw cotton. You can buy raw cotton is about $12 um, a pound raw with the seeds still in it. It's been put through a cotton gin but not carded or anything, so it won't be completely clean. Um, but it's a wonderful soft fiber that you could make your own batting just by placing it in between two pieces of fabric. So this is what I'm testing out today with the new machine. 
um, I have several sewing projects I have to finish. You can see that this is a wonderful machine as a hand crank. When it got here, I didn't even leave the motor on it for more than five minutes, so I, I guess I might also today put the motor back on it and just test it out and see how the motor runs. But as a hand crank, I love it, and because even though it's a little bit too heavy for my bike, it would have to go in the trailer, you can just pick it up by the top here and carry it around. It's about 20 pounds. So that's the 1959 Singer Spartan. Now, I want to show you something on the Spartan here. This came with a plastic bobbin, which um, I'm going to pop out of there. I, it, it just ran out. And even though I popped that out with the hook I have in my hand, this little button right here, when you push that, it pops the bobbin out. Um, I prefer metal bobbins, but it doesn't matter. Class 66 bobbins are what it takes. But what I wanted to show you is if you get a Spartan, or I believe most 99s, don't try to get this red felt out of there. You can actually put a little bit of oil on that red felt and it oils the bobbin case. But this, you have to remove. This other lint buildup everywhere around the bobbin case, you want to remove. Now, I'm using a hook just so I could point out what I mean. Um, a lint brush would probably pick it right up. I do have one. And sometimes what you have to do, and if you have an electric, unplug it before you start fiddling around like this with a metal hook. Um, sometimes what you have to do is take the needle plate off here if I can find my screwdriver, sorry, um, you can take the needle plate off and really get all of that lint out of there. And you should do this on any machine, um, but on the 99s and on the Spartan you don't want to remove that red felt. I have to take the screws all the way out. And as usual, if you have some kind of a magnet or a magnetic dish around, it's good to throw the screws in so that you don't lose them. They can tend to roll around. If that's all the lint that is in there, then this will be pretty clean. Usually, um, most machines I find have quite a bit of lint. See, so all, all through here, all of this, even though this doesn't have very much in there. But anything except that red felt, you can generally say, is lint. And you just don't want to keep running the machine with all of that clogging it up. Whenever you buy a vintage machine, this is one of the first things you want to do. Now also what you can do is, um, in this case with a Spartan, is you can take it out of the base and turn it upside down and take the same lint brush all along the underneath of the bobbin case. Now you would think that 
um, something like this isn't that important, but it really is because that lint can get very compacted and um, over time it just keeps building up on itself and it really can stop a machine from running. So that is how you remove the bobbin and how you remove the lint. And I did it again. I'm sorry I hit the camera. And this is a Class 66 metal bobbin that I'm going to put in there. I just prefer the metal bobbins. Um, there really isn't a difference between the plastic and the metal. But I prefer the metal. Now here are t my two test squares for the different types of batting. On the left is the um, cotton, pharmaceutical cotton batting, and I have several quilting lines. They're not perfect, but they're kind of going in like a star design. And then this is the flannel and cotton, and this is, uh, one line is a little crooked, but that's basically the design I'm thinking for the hanky quilts. So now what I'm going to do is uh, take these two squares and wash them in hot soapy water and let them dry and then take a look at how the batting acts with both of them and whether it shifts or not in the square that has the pharmaceutical cotton as a batting. And I did those on the Spartan. By the way, there's the back view of the Spartan without the motor on. And I've got the, I washed the squares and I've got them outside. So let's go outside and see what they look like. It's very bright and hot out today. We're supposed to have thunderstorms. Now I just hung them up. They're both wet. This is the one with the um, pharmaceutical cotton. And you can tell even though it's wet, it has much more body in the fabric. It would be, um, I think, a slightly more comfortable quilt. The flannel, um, very flat. It would still make a very nice quilt, I think. Um, it's very lightweight. This is just that little bit more squishiness, especially if I then went around this way. Or even if I did this pattern of quilting on it, each of these would be a little bit of, of a puff. And um, I like the pharmaceutical cotton as a batting. Of course, I'd have to do it by the square, which is basically how I'm doing the hanky quilt anyway. So it wouldn't be a problem for my quilt. It would be very difficult to lay out um, either a twin or a full-size quilt and put the batting down like that. So it's really meant for a quilt-as-you-go project or a square-as-you-go project. And the flannel is nice. It's sturdy. It's, um, it's flat. This reminds me more of a quilt. So those are the two test squares that I sewed on my new Singer Spartan. I just want to add at the end here, I put the motor back on and the original hand wheel and everything and the foot pedal. All the cords look good, but listen to this. If you hear that um, clackety clack noise, that's the motor making that noise. And um, I'm not sure why. Maybe it needs to be lubed. runs fine, but I think that's the motor um, making too much noise. I've never heard a motor sound like that before. So yeah, it's going back to a hand crank.